In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve a quadratic equation using the square root property. So let's start with this problem. 3x squared is equal to 48. So what can we do here? The first thing we can do is try to get x by itself. And we could do that by dividing both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 48 divided by 3 is 16. Now we have x squared, but we need to get x. So what we can do at this point is take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16, we're going to get two answers, plus or minus 4. So that's the answer that we have. x can equal positive 4 or negative 4. And to check the work, you can plug in your answer into the original expression. If we plug in positive 4, it's going to work out. 4 squared is 16. 3 times 16 is 48. Now, if we plug in negative 4, it will give us the same answer. Negative 4 squared, or negative 4 times negative 4, that will still be positive 16. And 3 times 16 is 48. So we have two possible answers. X could be positive 4, or it can be negative 4. Now let's try another problem. Let's say we have 5x squared minus 45 is equal to 0. Go ahead and solve the quadratic equation using the square root property. So in this problem, what I prefer to do is add 45 to both sides. So we'll have 5x squared is equal to 45. After that, we could divide both sides by 5. So x squared is going to be 45 divided by 5, which is 9. And then we could take the square root of both sides. So we're going to get plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. So that's the answer for this problem. Let's try this one. 4x squared plus 1 is equal to 50. So if you want to take a minute and work on this example, feel free to do so. Now the first thing I recommend doing here is subtracting both sides by 1. So we're going to have 4x squared is equal to 50 minus 1 is 49. Next, we need to divide both sides by 4. So we're left with x squared is equal to 49 over 4. After that, we could take the square root of both sides. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 4 is 2. And this is going to be plus or minus. So x can equal positive 7 over 2, or x can equal negative 7 over 2. So we have two possibilities. Now for the next problem, it's going to look like this. x minus 3 squared is equal to 25. Go ahead and try that problem. So in this format, we can square root both sides of the equation. The square root and the square will cancel. And so we're just going to have x minus 3. On the right side, the square root of 25 is 5. But we're going to get two answers, plus or minus 5. So we need to write two equations. x minus 3 is equal to positive 5, and x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. Here we can add 3 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 8. If we add 3 to both sides here, we get x is equal to negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. So we have two answers. x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to positive 8. Now let's make sure that both answers work in the original problem. So let's plug in 8. 8 minus 3 squared. 8 minus 3 is 5. 
5 squared is 25. So that works. Now let's try negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared, that's negative 5 times negative 5. That's positive 25. So both answers are correct. Now, go ahead and try this one. 3 times x minus 2 squared is equal to 27. It's very similar to the last problem, but slightly different. So before we could take the square root, I mean, we could take it now, but ideally, it's better to divide both sides by 3. You want to get rid of the number in front. If you do that, we get a perfect square on the right. 27 divided by 3 is 9. And at this point, we could take the square root of both sides. So we'll be left with x minus 2 on the left, and then plus or minus the square root of 9, which is 3. So we can write two equations. x minus 2 is equal to positive 3, and x minus 2 is equal to negative 3. So let's add 2 to both sides, and we'll get x is equal to 5. And if we add 2 to both sides and the other one, we'll get that negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So the two answers are x is equal to 5 and x is equal to negative 1. Now let's work on one more problem. Let's say we have x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 16. How can we use the square root property to solve this quadratic equation? Notice that what we have here is a perfect square trinomial. It's in the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to a plus b squared. In this case, the a squared is x squared, the b squared is 25. So if a squared is x squared, a has to be x, b has to be the square root of 25, which is 5. And then we have plus 2ab, so 2x times 5, which will give us the 10x in the middle. So what this means is that we could factor this expression like this, x plus 5 squared. Now, if you didn't recognize that that was a perfect square trinomial, you can factor it the old-fashioned way. So looking for two numbers that multiply to 25 but add to 10, and those two numbers will be 5 and 5. So when you factor it, it will be x plus 5 times x plus 5, which we can write it as x plus 5 squared. Now it's similar to the other problems that we've been working on. So we could take the square root of both sides, and this will give us x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. So now we can break this into two equations. x plus 5 is equal to 4, and x plus 5 is equal to negative 4. Now let's subtract 5 from both sides. So 4 minus 5 is negative 1 and negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. So we get that x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to negative 9. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to solve quadratic equations using the square root property.